where are you? Why aren't you picking my phone? My parents are forcing me to marry a stranger. Please, I need you here. Please, at least answer my text. I'm desperate. If you don't come here now, I don't know what I'd do. Sorry, babe. I can't do that anymore. You're on your own. What do you mean? Kyle, please, don't joke like this. But it ain't no joke, honey. I'm not in this mess. We are over. Now you go your way and I'll go mine. Huh? You're breaking up with me? But why? What happened? What happened to all the promises you made to me? Heart of the moment, babe. You shouldn't have taken it so seriously. But considering it's you, I should have been a bit more careful with my poetic verses. Kyle, why? What happened? Are you angry? Is it because I'm being married off to someone else that you're so mean to me? I swear I'll get out of here. So please, just give me another chance. I'll get out of this mess and we can be together again. Why are you such a dimwit, Selena? I told you, it's over. God, you're so clingy. Even when you act all strong and independent. I always hated that about you. I'm so tired of you winning. Listen, whatever happens to you is none of my business now. Please, I'll be left all alone if you leave me too. There is no one for me in this world. You were my only hope. If you go, I don't know what I'll do. My parents love me. And I have no one to call my friend. I thought you'd stay and that you'd support me. And I'm telling you I can't. I don't want to, actually. Stop crying like a baby. Do you think there is a fairy tale going on? Did you think you were Cinderella and I'd be your Prince Charming? You might have been a princess before, but the life you lead now is of a beggar. So do as Mama and Papa tell you to. Selena, if you don't return home in two days, we will have to take strict steps. I don't want to force you anymore. Stop pretending like you care, Dad. You can't do this to me. Then stop pretending as if you have another option. Because let me make it very clear to you. You don't. You can ignore my calls all you want, but let me clarify. You cannot run away from this. If you disagree, it won't be just your life falling into ruins. Ours will go down as well. I'm sure you don't want us to suffer. And what makes you think I don't? What have you guys ever done for me? I've been nothing but a maid to you guys. The moment mom died, you married that witch. You forgot about me and let her treat me as one of her servants. You were never a father to me. So what gives you the right now to make this decision for me? It's not a decision I'm making. It's something that can save your life too. Tell me. Do you want to continue your studies? You're in Harvard right now, studying under a scholarship. If we want, we can cancel it too. We may not be the strongest right now, but we do have our influence. So you are going to threaten me because of your failing business. Am I only space god you have left? Selena, I know we matter nothing to you. As for us as well, you are no one. We are more or less strangers, affecting each other from success or failure. On paper, you are still the daughter of Mark and Eva Valentine, and our reputation lies on your shoulder. If you don't listen to us, we will have no choice but make your life miserable. Or should I say, we will make the best friend of your life miserable. Fiona Hills, isn't that her name? Comes from a middle-class background, mother committed suicide and father is an alcoholic, who used to abuse her. If we want, we can drag her back to the life she escaped from. Do you really want us to take that step? And the worst part is, it won't be me dragging her back there. It will be your mother. I know you have no care for your life. You'd rather throw yourself under the bus to save someone else. You are kind. Better than I ever expected you to be. But I also know how much it would hurt you if you let your selfish desires get in your way. Something similar happened ten years ago. I'm sorry. I couldn't be of any help then. And I'm sorry even today. But this is the only thing I can do for you. All I can do is warn you of the worst that may come from your choice. Why are you telling me all this now? What will you get in return? Nothing. But I just want you to remember one thing. The world you are born in is cruel. And you need to make sure you don't falter. That boy you were seeing, he was nothing. But just a damn peasant who sold you when he had the chance. Aren't you guys doing the same thing? I don't even know who that man is. I've never seen him. Neither do I love him. 
How do you expect me to start a life with someone like that? Do you know who he is, dad? Have you ever seen him? Met him? Anything? Don't throw me away like this. I have a life. And I am weak. But I need some sort of hope to cling upon. Not many people have seen him, but he's well known. He chose you himself. What do you mean he chose me? I don't know. You just seem to be of his liking. Eva talked to him. In exchange, she asked for a hefty sum of his business. Our company is no longer doing well. It's about to sink, and that man came at the right time to save us. I know for all these years, I have done nothing for you. I fell apart and then let Eva control everything. Even my own soul. I know, asking for forgiveness would not bring any change to the relationship I proposally created with you. But still, as a father who once wished to give you the world, I want you to live. Eva tried to kill me so many times. She treated me worse than any of her mates, while you watched silently. The day I ran away from you people, you didn't even bother to check on me. I held myself together then. And I've been doing it since mom died. But you changed. And now you're trying to play the father I always looked for. Maybe things would have been different if I had found the courage to defy Eva. But I didn't. It's the truth you and I both live with. Acting like your father then would have only stopped you from becoming the person that you are today. I'm glad that you turned out to be like your mother instead of like me. I'm not going to talk to that woman, though. I don't want to hear her despicable voice. Still, talk to her. Just the way you're talking to me here. It's not the most appropriate way to discuss an earnest proposal like marriage. But I understand your sentiments. I felt hopeless, defeated. Memories from my dark past suddenly clouded my head, and I felt my stomach churn and disgust. My life wasn't always like this. I was born into a happy family, with a mother so kind and a father who always called me the apple of his eye. But when a tragedy happened, I lost my mother forever. I was ten, and I saw my entire family collapse. My father was broken, and I wasn't mature or strong enough to handle him. His business... The one he and my mother started was faltering. A woman came into his life then, Eva. She became his cane, the one who helped him stand back on his feet. It did not settle right with me at first, but to see my father live again gave me some sense of joy. However, all of it soon vanished. When that woman chose me her new plaything, my father was no longer alive. He was just a puppet, taking steps just as the woman told him. But I was not to become that. I had sworn to my dad mother then. My fire burned that wretch, so she decided to weaken me. I had a friend then, a really good one, who always stayed by my side. His lovely mother worked as a maid in our house for my mother, who often came to check on me. Eva found out how happy I was whenever I was with them, with him, so she decided to play a game, a game where she mentally broke the woman, treating her worse than an insect. Aside from the swollen eyes and the lines on her once lively face, I was unaware of what she was doing to her. And one day, it happened. When Eva pushed me down the staircase, her son came to save me, but the message was already sent. The boy was severely injured, his cranium almost damaged from the impact. Eva knew if she could not kill me, she could all the others I cared about. A week later, she left with her son while I cried all alone in my room. If the two had stayed, their lives would have been taken away, and I would have been the one responsible. I was not ready to carry that burden, that pain. But soon, I heard the lady committed suicide, leaving her son all alone in this world. I was the one responsible for that. I could have prevented that from happening, if only I had told her to stay away from me. But I didn't, and it led to a mistake I could never forgive myself for. Since then, all Eva has ever wished for is my misery. She made my life a living hell. She loved to see me suffer because I was the only one who never subjugated her. By the time I graduated high school, I had decided to go to Harvard for my studies. Away from them, I ran away with the hope that I'd never have to come back again. I started dating Kyle a year later, thinking it was love. But I was a fool. To be shackled like this... It's my fate. I cannot run away from it. Not anymore. Next day, 
Hello, my feisty little princess. You will be getting married in three days. We have everything prepared here. Be on time tomorrow so that we can go shopping, okay? Please don't make me wait. I'm sorry, but I don't do as you say, stepmother. Of course, of course, but princess, it's time for you to start listening to others. Your son-to-be husband is not very fond of people disobeying them. He'll adjust. After all, he took a liking to me, not the other way around. By the way, can I at least see his photo? That will be on your wedding day, honey. As you walk down the altar, you'll see him. I've heard he's pretty feared by people, whether they are his acquaintances or friends. Don't give him a hard time, or he might just take strict actions towards you. Not everyone is kind as me, and for a bratty kid like you, he may just end up punishing you more than I ever could. <laughs> right. You must be happiest, aren't you? Finally, seeing me giving in to you? But don't celebrate so much. I'll make your plan feel like always. You can't anymore, honey. Your best friend's already got an email from the university. One wrong step and it will be just like 10 years ago. You still remember that boy? He was your prince charming. Poor him. I heard he passed away a year ago, due to poor health. Must have been living a miserable life after his mother hanged herself in front of him. I hate you so much. So do I, but that's not the point. What's happened has happened. Don't let history repeat itself. The next day, the next day when I arrived home, I saw everyone busy with my wedding. Or should I say they were preparing for my funeral? I knew my freedom was being snatched away from me. But if that could save someone else, I'd do it happily. But the pain in my chest never died down. In the large mansion, I had no one. Reminiscent of the past still lingered in those empty corridors. And my thought returned to the boy I once called my savior. My eyes welled up with tears. The excruciating pain stabbing my chest with countless invisible knives. He was no more. And I could do nothing. I couldn't even see him one last time. The day before the wedding. Hey, princess. Crying cause your ex was such a douchebag? How did you get this number? I have my ways. But the important thing is, I finally found you. I was the one who sent my man to your boyfriend. You threatened him to break up with me? Oh, no, no. Of course not. We just offered him a little money. And then asked him if he's willing to give up on you. And so he did. Happily and as a bonus, he gave away your extra personal phone number. And what proof do you have? Eric shares a video of Kyle where he's constantly bad-mouthing me and making bad remarks. He was just with me for my money. But when he found out I had nothing to do with them, he got bored. But he still stayed because I was earning, and it helped him. As I heard all that, I wanted to slam my phone against the wall. Great. Thank you for making me hate him more now. I needed that. You didn't have to go for someone like him. You knew he would never treat you well, and yet you did. Why? Desperation. Loneliness. You can give it any name you want. But I don't care anymore. And neither should you. You got your profit. And that Eva got her share. Rejoice. You're quite harsh. If I'm not, you're gonna smash me under your 20 grand shoes. I may be expensive things now, but I haven't forgotten my origin. And I haven't forgotten my promise either. Sir, I'm not used to such puzzles, please. I'm already distressed enough, and your uninvited texts are already giving me headache. Then why don't you set your phone down and go to sleep? Why talk to me? Because I want to know even the slightest bit about the man I'll be marrying in two days. I believe you know plenty. I'm supposed to be your savior after all. What the hell? You'll find out soon. I'll wait for you on the altar, Princess Siri. I knew that name. I knew who called me by that. I am well aware of it. But how can it be? The following day, as I got ready, my head kept ringing back to that text. How can Eric know that name? Only Fred called me by that name. When we used to play together, he'd be my knight and I'd be his princess. 
but Eva said he was dead, so how? As I walked down the aisle, I could see the devilish grin on Eva. That was her biggest achievement, that she succeeded in ruining my life. The stranger I was about to marry looked unfamiliar. He appeared a few years older than me, his sharp features reflecting on his handsome face. As I stood in front of him, our gazes logged. The priest started with the vows, but I didn't listen. Eric's presence, it brought back a sense of familiarity in me, something I could not let go in the last nine minutes. And there it was, the scar on his forehead. His deep gray eyes bored into me, his smile growing wide as he whispered, I'm finally here, my princess, to save you. And I knew who he was, my best friend, the little boy who always stayed by my side, the boy I was so in love with my Prince Charming. They won't hurt you anymore, I promise. She won't, ever. When the I do's were done, I did not hesitate one bit to kiss him. With all my newfound passion, the audience stared at us, especially Eva, who was seething in anger. I was supposed to break today, but my happiness has returned to me. He was returned. My Fred. A few days later, the news was revealed to Eva. I found out she broke loose then. When I asked Fred about it, he simply explained. She did not even bother checking my background. That's how sure she was about his marriage ruining your life forever. Dad knew who he was all along though, but he never spoke a word to Eva about it. And now, I feel like everything has fallen back into place and that my life is finally better now that I have Fred with me. Maybe my life really is a fairy tale. Perhaps I got the happy ending I always yearned for. And I don't know if this married life is a dream I'll soon wake up from. But it's a beautiful dream I've seen in a long, long time.